what's up in this area hits this, drains down to this Tyler Forks and it comes out. And then the Tyler Forks goes clear out to the east and then cuts over and gets into Copper, Copper, Copper Falls. So what you've got is essentially a shadow in through here. So you haven't got water flow coming across this way. So we're actually on a hillside taking the northern side, leaving that ridge and leaving that top so the dam is still in place. Mm -hmm. And so you will have that water, uh, but it doesn't appear that there's any streams crossing in through here except on the outsides. But you may have some geologic fr uh, fractures that will bring the water in, fill it, and then it'll outfall. So it'll be able to wonder if it's sitting there like a pond. Oh, no, you don't want that. Inlets and outlets are going to have nothing but yeah. something then stale. Be, then it comes right. stagnant, you're right. No, right. it's got moving and flowing water. It should be moving <clears throat> cold and deep, you know, kind of uh, lake trout sort of. <laughs> At those depths. At those depths. Yeah. But, but in here, you can have, you know, three foot, you sure. know, kind of panfish down to 12 foot, you know, your yeah. walleye habitat, you can... Be more like Canadian waters, you know, plant all the little ways, right. all of a sudden, and, and drops off. Yeah. yeah. Now, in order to establish what the water flow is, we've got to put <coughs> monitor wells in to see what the hydrology nature is doing. So we, we put a well here, 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 here. We've got one, we just finished drilling here, and then we'll put another one here, and probably somewhere back over here, and cluster around it. And what you'll do is you'll draw down to see if the water's coming in these directions, what kind of conduits so you'll, you'll suck water from the main hole here, and then you can tell from the, the monitoring what it's doing to the groundwater around it. Sure. And that lets you do a, a model for how the groundwater moves. And once you know that, then you can plan this so that you don't uh, impact groundwater for other folks and things. So you don't have to worry about any water you're digging, the water coming in, you can dig or something? You'll have water coming in. Heavy rains, you'll have water coming in. So you've got to have pumps down there. And you've got to be able to capture the water in the pit, just like in any mining operation, mm -hmm. bring that up, and then use that for makeup water or any kind of use that you'd have on site. But you know, the, the objective here is, is to do a zero discharge because then you're not dealing with federal permits. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you, you don't want to put any water out, but if you have to, then you treat that water so it meets the standards, and then you discharge it. But the first, the first preference is no, no discharge. <laughs> we don't want it. Not until we're done. Then when it's yeah. done, this can discharge, and that can flow out. But anything else we have, uh, will the water come in as we're mining? Uh, like I said, during rains. But yeah, you'll have fissures and cracks that will do it, and that's what will feed this. Uh, so you, you do want to keep a track of that. You do know you want to know where it's going to come in, how much is going to come in, how big a pump you need to have on hand. Uh, set it up so you can put it to the surface, know how much volume you have on surface so that you can build a pond that will hold it and then you can use it for process water.